Hi everyone, it's Dr. Custer here. Today we're going to do a lecture on the scholarly activity curriculum in research and quality safety and a introduction to the MSU COM SCS. Now, as you guys know, I was sick last week, so this is the lecture you should have re received at orientation. And so let's get started. The goals of today's lecture, just a brief introduction to scholarly activity. Um, we're going to review the curriculum and new innovations. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the Michigan State um, College of Osteopathic Medicine statewide campus system, which we are members of. Information on clinical faculty status and the benefits of faculty appointment. And then I'm going to wrap up with just a few notes on studying and test taking. All right, so what is scholarly activity? When I say the term, most people look at me like I'm silly. It's the work of a scholar. And what is a scholar? Someone who's done advanced study in a special field. So scholarly activity is some, a topic that you're interested in, an activity that you're going to explore in some sort of investigative nature and produce a report to disseminate to others. That's all it is. So traditional research versus scholarly activity, and this is kind of important too, Traditionally, resident, we all did research, you know, either bench or clinical. Um, it, there wasn't like a lot of variability. Scholarly activity includes that, of course, but it's just so much more. Quality and safety projects, healthcare disparities, social determinants of health, population health projects, resident and patient education. So the project can really be a lot of different types of, of things. So we're going to talk about uh, Boyer's definition of scholarship real quickly. Um, a lit review showed that most institutions in the U.S. place emphasis on all four major components of the Boyer's definition of scholarship, and um, that would be discovery, integration, application, and teaching. So we're going to go through each one individually. Discovery, you guys know what this is. Building new knowledge through hypothesis-driven, original, basic, clinical, other types of research on health or disease. So this would be your traditional model of research. Now, what would you do for the dissemination? You could present a poster, perhaps, and we have a lot of posters up, so you guys can take a look at those. Um, typically, the posters are um, we submit them through either the MOA conference, there's the SCS poster day, the QI summit, so there are options. Um, submitting an original research paper abstract for publication obviously would be a great way to disseminate your study. Um, presenting a report of your original research in some sort of state or local grand rounds. These examples, they come directly from the old ACGME family medicine rubric for scholarly activity. Um, so these are just some examples that are thrown out there. All right, integration. So integration is just synthesizing current knowledge um, to make it useful for other people to understand or to have access to it. So, for example, um, a case study with a literature review, if you had a really in-depth lit review of, um, of a case that was pretty interesting, um, that would that would kind of count as an integration type scholarly activity. Now I do have an asterisk there because um, we have a policy that although every resident is encouraged to write up case reports for publication and or do posters at any point in the residency, we do require more than just a case report as your scholarly activity. So we will, you know, figure that out together if you want to do a case report. Um, Another example of synthesizing knowledge, lead a local or state patient education conference series. Publish an op-ed in a local or state newspaper explaining the meaning and significance of a current public health concern. Now these are all examples of just disseminating the information. That's the most important thing. You guys need to learn from each other and from research. Um, so application, so applying, right? Using knowledge to improve healthcare, medical practice, uh, health system operation, public health, or policy. So this would be where your quality improvement projects would fall. Um, this is another uh, type of project, again, like uh, creating a patient education program and then um, disseminate it in some sort of newsletter. I, 
Serving as a chair on one of the medical society committees, we have had residents every year in the local um, chapters of the uh, medical society. If that's something you're interested in, please let one of us know. All right, teaching. Obviously, you know what teaching is, developing, implementing, and evaluating educational programs. Um, preparing a curriculum for use in a residency program. We had a resident that just graduated who created an advocacy project curriculum um, that we've added to the community medicine rotation. Um, and it's a great project, and it was tested, and it, it was effective, so now we have it in our use. So that's a great way to teach others. Um, a program, if you develop a program for patient self-care for chronic disease, you know, and you're disseminating, again, you have to present this, this stuff. You can't just write it up and that's it. All right, so those are just some examples of projects. So why scholarly activity? Part of becoming a really good practitioner is you have to be able to critically evaluate evidence and apply the findings that are relevant. So that's really what we need you to learn. Um, it teaches you the principles you need to do this really well and ensures your success. So I, it's so important to use the knowledge you gain through this curriculum to guide, guide your clinical care. I mean, we'll learn together. I'll teach you about quality improvement, patient safety, um, all sorts of different research principles, and um, it'll be a great year. So real quick, the Scholarly Activity Curriculum. It's structured to deliver content throughout your residency, so you participate in this curriculum all three or four years. The content is developed by program year. So, and then, so the PGY1s will have their own curriculum. This PGY2s will build on that, and the threes build on that, and so forth. Each year is divided into two curriculum. The fall time, we're gonna do more research and scholarly activity for you guys. And then in the spring, we'll do quality, winter, spring, we'll do quality and safety. So what does this curriculum entail? It includes self-directed activities, um, instructor-led educational sessions and workshops, and project-specific work. So I think these are just screenshots from new innovations, and I'm just going to go through the first year ones for you guys. Oh we got to get through this first. The PGY ones, it's mostly self-directed work, uh, videos and modules. Combine this with lectures, workshops, and group activities where you're actually doing some experiential um, project component. So PGY1, we want you to learn. That's our goal. Learn to use these principles we're teaching you in daily care. And by the end of the project, or I'm sorry, by the end of your first year, I would expect that we would meet and have your project idea fleshed out. PGY 2 and 3, there's much less self-directed work um, for the curriculum, and it's pretty much focused on project-specific work and dissemination. There is quality uh, and safety modules in second and third year, um, but there is a lot of uh, project-specific. Okay, so here's the uh, PGY 1 Scholarly Activity and Research Curriculum. Um, actually, this video has changed. This will, the introduction to research will all be part of the lecture that I give you at Didactics um, in the fall called the Intro to Scholarly Activity, um, and we'll go through this prin these principles. Um, but there are videos. Most of them are statistics. Um, some of them are study design comparing groups. So these are all things that are important to know and understand. You guys don't have to be st statisticians by any means, but you need to understand when you read a journal article what they're talking about on some sort of level. So we've, I've created all these um, on the YouTube channel. They'll be posted soon. Um, they're 10 minute videos. You just watch the video and then there'll be a link in New Innovations to connect to the quiz. Um, and then you just submit the quiz and you're complete for that module. Um, and then here we have Understanding Clinical Trials. That's one of the AMA um, graduate medical education um, modules. And then the last thing is, and you'll see here, the project to topic and type identified. That's due by the end of June to 2019. So I know it's odd. There's this huge gap, but that's filled up by the quality and safety curriculum. So let's take a look at that. 
All right, so these are IHI modules here that, I, that you're going to do. And then in February, um, on the 1st of February, I'll be assigning you a case, um, a patient safety case to read, and there'll be questions that you have to consider. Then we'll have the um, RCA workshop and the patient safety lecture RCA um, workshop. And after we work through that, there will be an assessment. And then after we do the QI activity following that, there will be a, an additional assessment. So these are the steps of the quality and safety curriculum. Real quickly, if you guys want, I, the IHI is downloadable as an app on your phone. And if you have 15 minutes, you can get through a module for the IHI. So it's a really convenient way to access it. Now the twos and threes, I'm not going to go through because you guys already know this stuff. All right, so let's talk about the MSU COM statewide campus system. It's MSU's educational consortium. It exists to enhance the quality of postdoctoral education. It's collective efforts from all the members. And I'm just going to show you this page. I hope this works. Education and resources are found at this scs.msu.edu. So this is the statewide campus um, web page. And here you'll see scholarly activity. There's all sorts of things available, including access to the Spartan Medical Research Journal. Um, I've worked with Dr. Corser for years now um, on this kind of stuff, so if you have any questions or anything, I'll teach you how to get through it. Faculty development is another great thing. Um, they do have online courses on like how to do journal club cl correctly, how to evaluate medical literature, um, and the research training courses. So these are just some of the, oh, and there's me, of course, <laughs> to teach for quality. So the website has a lot of links with a lot of resources, so check that out. And here's some of the educational stuff that we were just talking about, but journal club resource, um, evaluating medical literature, writing for publication, um, IRB principles, quality and safety and faculty development. So those are just the SCS things. And then, of course, the Spartan Medical Research Journal is a peer-reviewed journal. It is entering, it's almost, I think, at the end of its second year. So we will have PubMed IDs um, at that time. Another thing that you guys get with your um, faculty status, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is access to the MSU libraries online. They do have Dynamed. Um, I know people are, you know, either Dynamed or up to date. I, Dynamed's great. It's um, there and it's easy to access. There's other databases. There's also research help, writing services, and journal access. And I'm not going to go to that website. All right, so looking at medical li literature, this is what I do. You guys can do whatever way you want, but I typically use PubMed or another evidence based source to look up the articles on whatever I'm, my topic of interest. Nowadays, you really, if you're careful, you can Google it, but you still have to click on the PubMed links to get the article and not the crazy links. Um, and then if it's not available for free on PubMed, I usually just copy and paste it into the MSU library site, and this will pull up the article, and then you'll be able to have the article for free. So here's what I'm talking about. If you pulled something off PubMed, just the title, you put it here and click search, and it will pop up, and you can click on it to access it. All right, a really quick note on medical literature in general. All right, <laughs> evidence-based medicine. So we want to use evidence-based medicine. So we're making medical decisions that make sense, that have been research, designed, and there's evidence that they've been proven. That's what we want to do. We follow this standard. So when you're looking for medical literature, for example, for your lit review or for journal club, it's really important to use credible sources. Now, credibility on the internet is such a big thing right now. It's important to understand that well, first of all, the difference between a .com, .org, and .gov. I hope everyone realizes .coms are not credible, typically. Um, 
And so if you're looking up uh, resources, don't go to blogs and don't use Wikipedia, please. Wikipedia, is, if there's a link to the actual source and the article is legit, that's fine. It's good to get a, a brief overview, but you can't, you can't use Wikipedia as a resource. You can't use pop culture magazine articles as a resource. If you have a pop culture magazine article and it doesn't have a link to any scientific study, that's not credible. It has, if you can, then you just go to the study and use that as your source. So these are the things that for looking up studies, um, PubMed, obviously, Cochrane Library, Ovid, um, ACP Journal Club, and Dynamet are all resources, or sources, rather. All right, let's talk about applying for clinical faculty status at Michigan State. So everyone will apply as a resident. That is one of the benefits that we have as a member. Um, they're going to send you some sort of approval and you will receive a ZPID. And then there's, there's instructions on how you do it. So you'll request your PIN um, and then you use your ZPID and PIN and you register for your NetID. And then you activate it and um, then you can use it for all the MSU resources like the library or perhaps um, something on D2L if they had posted it. So helpful links, you guys can see. Here's the NetID page, that's pretty good. If you need to re request a PIN and how to activate. So these are all things you can look at. All right, a note on studying in residency. Let's turn gears, shift gears just a bit. Medicine, medicine is a never ending educational endeavor because it's changing so rapidly. Um, it is, you have to study something pretty much every day for the rest of your life. Even if it's just reading a journal article in the bathroom, it's necessary to study. An hour a day will keep you current. I want you guys to realize, I know you're busy and I know residency's hard, but there has to be education component every single day. And if you're on an outpatient rotation and there isn't like a noon lecture or any kind of you know education, you need to, you need to be doing that on your own. You need to do it even if there is, you should be doing it. Um, so let's say you're on GI and they talk about something, you should go home and review that GI topic. Um, it's important to learn while you're on these rotations what their, what their specialty is about. Um, Comlex in-service exam review questions are a great way um, this year if you are taking that. Um, reading, journal, <laughs> reading journal articles, book chapters, doing modules online, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, Technology will always be your friend. Here's an effective study strategy. It's called retrieval practice. It's basically the, the concept of self-testing or testing each other, right? Retrieving it out of your brain, the information. So it, when you're learning a new topic, you want to take notes probably. Um, but then what you do is you force yourself to recall the information, either via like flashcards, quizzing or practice questions. Um, so retrieval practice, let's say you're studying with someone, you know, and you go over a specific topic, then your study buddy, you know, four or five minutes after you've reviewed it, will ask you, hey, what about this? What is this? And you have to try to remember it. And then 10 minutes, ask the same thing, you know, on and on. You, you ask yourself four or five times, and then you remember the information. So that's retrieval practice. Uh, and do your best not to cheat. <laughs> when you're taking the review questions online, don't, um, don't cheat, don't put it in. Try your best to answer the right way and don't look at the answers before you actually think about the question. All right, spaced repetition. This is really easy. If you only study something once, you're not gonna retain it very much. If you study something and you review over time, now this can be the spaced repetition, I mean the retrieval practice, this could be um, you're going to learn something on Monday and you're reviewing it Wednesday, Saturday, and next week. However it is, you have to review, you have to go back and, and retrieve it, otherwise you won't retain it very well over time. All right, so preparing for Comlex and USMLE, these are just a few slides of tips. Um, you know, it is kind of good to take the COMSE 
to see where you're at. Um, it can identify areas that you're weak in, weaker in that you can focus more studying on. Um, doing practice questions is absolutely needed, necessary. Um, ComBank actually is true learn now. ComQuest and then UWorld is good too. Focus your directed studies in your weaker areas, like I just said. You want to use multiple formats. Um, everyone has a different way to do this. I like Master the Boards. I like writing all over it and highlighting um, to take notes. Like while I'm going, if I was going through questions online, then I would, if something I would had no idea about, I would just go in and take notes on that subject and study that. Make sure you review OMT. There's OMT on Comlex. Um, Didactics Online is a really good YouTube channel. They're kind of goofy, but they explain the sacral torsions really well, which is something I always struggle with. And then, you know, stay calm on the day of the exam. If you have a known anxiety issue or if you have something physical about test taking, it's okay to see your doctor for possible treatment options. Sometimes stress and anxiety can really, really harm our performance and you know, even maybe you need to reach out to a counselor or something. I mean, there's a lot of different options we can talk about if you have anxiety test taking. Tutoring is always an option. Um, I am going to have regular tutoring hours this year. It'll be alternating Thursday evenings with Saturday morning, um, and I will send you the schedule. But I can tutor for Comlex 3. Some tips for testing day. Don't procrastinate and don't cram. Don't even cram, it's not worth it. Plan your study time accordingly. Give yourself uh, two months before and come up with your plan. How many questions a day are you gonna do? What subjects are you going to cover? Arrive early on test day, review, prepare an outline. Use visual aids. Visual aids are good usually um, if you have that sort of memory. Um, there is this thing called Picmonics, which I have uh, recently discovered, and it's kind of interesting. It's like pictures and mnemonics instead of words, and it's kind of easier to, under to remember it, actually. Staying healthy. Again, like I talked about with self-care, it's important to eat and drink water and sleep and exercise. And the morning of the test, make sure you do eat breakfast and use the bathroom before the test starts. All right, a few more quick t tests. So this is from Des Moines uh, Osteopathic School, and they came up with, actually, I don't know if that's the osteopathic school. They came up with this multiple choice uh, PDF. I've, I highly recommend um, taking advantage of that. I will put the link in the, um, in the notes below the video. I'll put these links. But it's really good stuff if you struggle with test taking. Another tip, don't get lost in question details. Uh, read the question first because sometimes the cases are so long and there's so much irrelevant information to try to throw you off, I think. If you know what they're looking for, it, you know, you can look for the information through the paragraph. If the detail that you're reading about has nothing to do with the question, just ignore it. Don't even consider that. Um, setting up your pace is really important. Make sure that you know how much time you need. You're going to have to block it out and make sure you're answering. And then check it. Check against your where, what question are you on and what time is it. Make sure you stay at pace. And I don't know if you can do this on the computer exam, but I have this is old. Um, skip questions that you have no, no idea about. Go back at those at the end. I still recommend doing that if that's an option. All right, ways of learning. So traditionally, my generation, um, we read textbooks, we read journals, we read newspapers, guidelines. So we're the generation that are still destroying the trees. However, the, you guys have all new options available to you. There are plenty of credible videos on YouTube. Um, here's my YouTube channel, with, which you're watching the video on. This is meant for orientation, obviously. Podcasts, another really good source of information. If you have a long commute, that might be something you'd consider. And then apps, downloading apps on your phone. Make sure they're credible, but there are so many algorithm apps to manage things. It's incredible. And then Picmonics, which I talked about. 
Ultimately, you need to figure out what works best for you. So in summary, part of your life as a resident, you're going to have to learn the, quali the quality improvement, patient safety, principles of research, how to apply them. And remember, we're doing this for your benefit. I want to teach you guys the necessary skills to be well-informed, competent practitioners all the time, delivering the best possible care. So that's why scholarly activity is important. That's it for today. Um, there's my email. I, pr I uh, prefer email, but in, if it's an emergency, you can text me. Um, and of course, this is on YouTube. And we'll close with this.